Hi, I'm Natalie with uh, Quilt Culture in Red Bluff, California, and we have started Aprons for Autism. Uh, we have a previous video that's gotten great response. We so appreciate everybody. If you enjoy this video and you want to find out more information about what we're doing, go ahead and click the link in the description below. And if you like it, please like it and uh, feel free to send me comments, subscribe to the page. We're going to be posting more videos. It's really a great cause and we're so encouraged that so many people are supporting us. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a short video on making the adult size apron because children with autism become adults with autism. And so what we wanna do is provide aprons to every adult with autism on the planet, which is great. Okay, so there's a couple of ways that you can get this uh, pattern. You can either order a kit on our website or it is a free downloadable pattern, the adult size and the child size both. So just go to www.quiltculture.art, A-R-T, and uh, feel free to help yourself to a pattern. So I'm going to show you how to cut out the adult pattern in order to make the pattern as simple as possible. It's a little bit complicated. So there are pictures in the pattern and it shows you how to lay it out, but we're going to follow the directions on how to make this. Step one says lay fabric onto cutting mat with the fold facing you. Place the neck cutout pattern piece aligned with the fold and the top edge of the fabric. Place the arm cutout pattern piece so the alignment errors are pointing towards each other. Now, here's your arm cutout. Here's your neck cut out. Here's the arrows facing each other. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and lay this out. There's the factory fold right here, okay? We have the alignment arrow. We're going to line this up with the top edge of the fabric here, right? And then we are going to put the alignment arrows pointing towards each other, all right? Now, <clears throat> I don't have a tendency to use pins. You can use pins, uh, scissors, whatever makes you comfortable. I prefer the rotary cutter, so that's what I do. And what we're gonna do is we're going to cut out the neck. So I lay the ruler here, lined up with the top edge, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut down here until it stops being straight, all right? And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna cut this around the corner to meet up with the straight part, all right? And then your little piece will come out. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to lay this over here. There should be three inches. This strap right here should be three inches wide, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we are going to cut down this side until we meet up with this straight line on the pattern piece for the arm cutout, all right? So, I'm gonna just pull this away a little bit so I don't cut it. <laughs> So straight down here, and we're gonna cut it until it starts to curve, right? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut around this curve up to this side. To the part where it goes straight again. All right, and then over here, we are going to Cut the straight line to finish up the strap. So I use the top edge of the fabric here with this line to line it up straight. All right, and then you can cut forwards or backwards either way. I use the QS ruler because it doesn't slip, so that part is nice. I take away all the parts that I don't need. All right, and what you'll have, just like in the picture is this center piece here that comes out, all right? So what you end up with it looking like is this. <clears throat> here's your neck piece, here's the arm cut out right here, and if you see the picture, the picture looks exactly like that, all right? Now the only other part that's left is this strap here. It needs to be three inches just like this strap is here, and we're going to have to cut it down the entire side so what you're going to do is you're going to take this, take your full piece of fabric, you're going to fold it in half, okay, line up your selvage edges there, all right, <clears throat> and you're going to lay it down just like that, 
and then we're going to make this strap three inches wide. So you can use a three inch mark on your ruler, okay? And we are going to cut the salvage off. Bam! Just like that. All right, step two, place and pin, cut out. It should look like this. Step three, we already did all of that. You're so efficient, I love it. Step four, trim the selvage edge down to make the strap three inches wide. And <laughs> we did that one too already. Oh my gosh, we're rolling right along. It's only 10 steps. Step five, apply a rolled hem along the arms and the neck. You will need to ease in the curves. The rolled hem should be quite small. Also hem the back edges where you cut the salvage off. So what that means for us is we have this piece here and we're gonna do everything that's curved and also gonna do the back edge, all right? Now, if you're using batiks, which is how I designed the pattern, it won't matter which side's the front or the back as long as all of your rolled hems go into the same direction towards one side. So on the sides, I'm just going to do a little turn and a turn. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I know some of you have commented that you have a rolled hem foot. If that's easier for you to use, then great, do that. Uh, the design of the apron is meant to be easy. It's not meant to be hard. So we'll just zip it right through and we'll be done in no time. It's batik, so it actually uh, kind of presses down pretty easily if you just do your finger press on it. So that's what I do is I get it started and then I just keep my rolled hem about the same and give it a little press down and then I just zip away. On the sides that are long and straight, it's okay if the rolled hem's a little bit larger. And uh, as long as both sides are consistent and the same, then you won't have a problem when you match up your shoulder seams. Now, <clears throat> from there, you're gonna turn this and we're gonna go around one of the armholes. So on this one, you probably want your rolled hem to be a little bit smaller because you've got that curve coming up. I don't like NASCAR, slow down on the curve, you get it. All right, here it comes. And it should just ease in. And if you just finger press it a little, it just goes. Super simple, not difficult. Anybody can do it. This is probably the hardest part of the whole apron. is super short. Keep this one small too because you got that curve coming up. say just use your finger when you roll it just give it a little press and it stays quite nicely all right neck done <clears throat> another arm all right 
one more arm and then <clears throat> the other side of the back and then we will have all of our rolled hemming done which is fantastic Love those long straight ones so quick. The curves on this apron are actually quite a lot easier than the child size because they're not so steep. Not so tight, I should say. Okay. One more down the back and then all of our rolled hemming almost all will be done we still have to do the bottom of the pocket but that's straight that's easy if you want to you can iron this ahead of time but like i say with the batiks finger pressing is usually enough so bad. Ta-da! Okay, number six. Hem the bottom of the apron up by turning the bottom twice, stitching along the top of the hem as well as the folded edge. This creates a nice detail and adds to the durability. So what we're gonna do is, based on your rolled hem, this is the front now of the apron. And so we're going to take it face up, right? With the right side up. And we're going to hem just the bottom edge where we're going to create a pocket. So again, it's just a rolled hem. It's like a little more than a quarter or a half, somewhere in there. And I know it's gonna feel like you're doing it backwards, but you should be doing it the opposite of what the rolled hem on the side is, because this folds up to make the pocket. And so, it's gonna be a nice little edge of detail. And hopefully, it will last a long, long time. All right, then as soon as you're at the end of this, take it right back out of the machine. I just push it down towards me and then I go back and do my second line of stitching right close to the edge. So now we're going to do a little ironing. It's a little bit of ironing, not too much. So I like just to give everything a little press, makes your curves nice, makes your product nice. You know, we want the person that receives this to love the apron as much as we do. So just a quick little press on all of the strappy areas where you did your rolled hem. And then fluff it on up. And what we're gonna do is fold up eight inches. Wait, directions. Okay, I'm back. All right, eight inches, eight inches from the bottom hem and press a line. All right, so we got our ruler, whammo, eight inches, almost perfect. Just a little bit more there, all right. 
and we'll press a line eight and eight all right and this is going to be helpful because we have to run a line of stitching along the bottom and then we're going to make some pockets we're going to make quite a few in this because the fabric is wider because it's adult sized and so we want to have different size pockets um not ones that are so big you know a little bit a couple smaller ones too okay <clears throat> stitch along the fold and then stitch pockets uh stitch pocket lines to create four pockets or more if you'd like and stitch the ends closed these lines are flexible so don't worry there's no correct size everybody likes different size pockets so one across the bottom that edge sure does help boy you can fly all right we're gonna sew the end closed and then we'll just move over and do a pocket <clears throat> and we'll keep on in similar fashion however many pockets you feel is good There's no rules about pocket size. Okay, and then we're gonna sew the other end shut. There you go, pockets, check. Okay, so uh, pretty much the last step is to do the strap. So the best way to do this is lay the apron face down. All right, because it's a cross back apron, you're going to take the one side and you're going to cross it over like this. And you're going to cross this opposite one down. And these two are the ones that get sewn together. So I'll just stick a pin in that. All right, then you're going to take this other side and you're going to cross it over and you're going to pull this one down. Right. And these two are the two that get sewn together. All right. And I'll stick a pin in that. So you can see the cross back, hopefully. Can you see the cross back? So that's how to do it. I've tried to do it myself, thinking I'm all smart and whatever. I mess it up every time unless I lay it down like this. It only takes a second and it means no seam ripper. Okay, so a quick fringe seam on just these two little straps and then we're gonna be done. So, French seam here and flip it over and sew it back together. That's your French seam. Totally easy. Same thing on this one since it's pinned super fast. French seam. Sew that one. Flip it over. Sew the other way. French seam complete. And the very, very last step, which is the best step of all is we are going to find an area on the pocket. We are going to take our aprons for autism label and we are gonna stick it on there and we're just gonna sew it down on all four sides. We don't want that to fall off. And it has a little area that says handmade by. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to put handmade by Yaya. Because Yaya is what my granddaughters call me. And they're the reason that we do this. So it's appropriate. Congratulations. You have now finished one apron. And if you would like to see it on a body, this is mine. I wear it all the time. It's fantastic and amazing, and I love it. And I love you guys for helping so much. So message me, like the page, like the video, check out the website, do all of the things. And you know what? Together, 
we can bring awareness to this for everybody all over the globe. So thank you so much.